It's super satisfying to take the RV14 to visit another Vans aircraft builder accomplish a major milestone. This is an RV8 and today was first flight day. Didn't go exactly as planned. That's a new aircraft, correct? Brand new airplane. Very nice. Yeah, it took them uh, seven years to finish it. Seven years, really? That's correct. And it's a quick build. I'm, I'm an idiot. I, like it. <laughs> I hope to like it as well. Got an airplane that flies. Or it doesn't. What the hell was that? Tower 7 Alpha Romeo has got an unexpected vibration immediate return. Today is a special day. It's first flight day. And as a new home builder myself, having just finished the RB14, with Dave fresh off the flight test program for that airplane, I can relate. It's sunrise and this is first flight day. Hey Dave, is this the first flight? Hey Herm. I'm really excited to be here to document the process of Dave doing the first flight of Marty's RV8. It'll be interesting to see. I want to talk to Dave because I know I'm probably going to want to fly tomorrow and I'm not sure whether I should. Marty's excitement is understandable, considering this project has been a seven-year journey for him. We learned a lot during the test flight program of the RV-14, and I shared that whole process, but here's some highlights from the initial briefing with Marty before the flight. Oil, so we're going to call it if the oil's under 190. We're taking okay. It. I was thinking for your first flight, you probably want to be up around 80% power, which, yeah. is, which is a lot of power, and, and maybe leaned, but rich of peak. Right, so I'll be looking at your CHDs. I'm just going to spitball a happy spot. That's okay. Richard Peak at 80% power, uh, 2550 RPM probably, mm -hmm. and however much manifold pressure at altitude I can get to get to 80%. Cylinder head temperatures, you should be good to 450 on that engine, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, we'd like to see 400. If it starts creeping above 425 and I can't control it, yeah. I'm aborting the flight. Right. We're dry fitted, as, in, as is always the case for me. I'm, you know, close to the canopy, but. I can wear the helmet, which is a nice uh, safety item. More or less good to go here. So seven years of work and it all comes down to this. Again, I'm really excited to be here. This is a story that every aircraft builder will experience, but the nerves are real. I'm nervous as hell. You guys are the cheering squad for Marty? Yeah, yeah we are. Clear prop. Temperatures are insane, gauges look good. And we're just gonna talk to ground and give them a bit of a heads up on what we're doing here. Pontiac ground, it's RV8 Experimental November 657 Alpha Romeo. RV657 Alpha Pontiac ground, right now on the left tax speed Delta, 10806, ultimate 3034. Yeah, Pontiac ground, 657 Alpha Romeo. We're at November, uh, we don't wanna do uh, the flight just yet. This will be the first flight for the airplane. I just wanted to, to uh, kind of give you a heads up. We plan on doing a run up in our uh, hangar bay here and then uh, heading out, I want to do a high-speed taxi down the long runway, and then eventually uh, we'll go flying after that. And the call sign is a 657 Alpha Romeo? 657 Alpha Romeo, that's affirmative. Trust Alpha Romeo, roger that. Just advise ready taxi and cancel your taxi uh, instructions now. I'll advise ready to uh, taxi for uh, 7 Alpha Romeo. So Dave did a thorough run-up, which I'm going to skip, and I'll just get into some of the relevant highlights from the flight. And ground, uh, 657 Alpha Romeo is ready for the high-speed taxi, and we're at November. Mr. Cross, Alpha Romeo, Pontiac Ground, wind at 130, climb with 303, wind 9 on left, taxi via Delta. And then once you're holding short, 9 on left, contact tower from there, 120.5. Alrighty, we'll uh, hold over to tower short of uh, 9 or left for 7 Alpha Romeo. There goes your baby. She's in good hands. He's oh, the I most cool cucumber I've ever met. I know right. that. 7 Alpha Romeo, thanks. Yeah, that's a new aircraft, correct? Brand new airplane. Very nice. Yeah, it took him uh, seven years to finish it. Seven years, really? That's affirmative. And it's a quick build. That's I'm an cool idiot. Honest, I like it. <laughs> That's kind of cool, honestly. I like it. I hope to like it as well. This is probably as close to perfect airplane as Vans ever came up with. It was beautiful weather today, which meant it was busy at the airport, which translated to longer than ideal ground operating, which you don't really want to do with a brand new engine. It's wow. a crazy wait, but this proves the airplane. Traffic, this is brutal. I traffic in sight of a Mike Kilo. Check. 
Experimental 657 Alpha Romeo High Speed Taxi on runway 9 or right is approved. Proceed on to the runway, wind to 0505. 5. 7 Alpha Romeo. High speed taxi testing can be considered a controversial part of flight testing, so I'm not going to get into that debate here, but we did cover that in a previous episode. And on the high speed taxi, we're going to validate the governor, we're going to validate the airspeed indicator. And Marty hadn't finished configuring his G3X Touch, so you'll see a bunch of yellow on this panel. We're not going to worry about that. Dave knows the numbers he's looking for. And Tower uh, 7 Alpha Romeo is off on uh, Charlie 10, and uh, we'd like to go flying. I'd like to do uh, an orbiting climb over the airport to as high as you can get me. That's reasonable. November 7 Alpha Romeo, traffic's on pile for the parallel runway. Runway 9 or right. Line up and wait. Line up and wait, 9 or right. 7 Alpha Romeo. Mixtures full. Seven, sorry, Delta on. Charlie, turn right at Charlie 10 if you can make it. Ready to rock. Airplane's configured. November 7, Alpha Romeo, fly straight out for now. I will call your turn. Runway 9 or right, clear for takeoff. 7, Alpha Romeo is clear for takeoff. You'll call the turn. I got there 1-4, Whiskey, I see in the turn. You're following the Cessna we heading to your left on the downwind. You have them in sight. Airspeed's a lot. Whiskey, we got them in sight. Pages are green. It flies. Toy does it. I'm going to pull it back a bit. So some builders insist on doing the first flight themselves, but you, you're happy to like offload that? Like, what's your, what's your thoughts there? I want the most qualified person for the job to do the job. I mean, there's that whole, why would I risk anybody else's neck but my own? But, but uh, it's much less of a risk with an experienced test pilot. Yeah. And I can learn uh, a whole lot from their information that I w wouldn't have absorbed myself, so. Marty's being humble, which is a good thing, but he's got a fair bit of flying experience, as well as drumming. He knows what dedication is, and he also knows he's too close to this project to be objective. This is his day, and I'm glad we're here to help. And uh, Tower 7 Alpha Romeo, can I just linger to the north of the airport at uh, 3,500, is that okay? 7 Alpha Romeo, that's approved. I'm intending to orbit over the airport. Just a basic orbit, mm -hmm. trim it out, all good. Tank swap at 10 minutes into the flight. I'm planning to orbit for 25 minutes. At that point, this is up to you. I recommend kind of the Elliott approach for wind-up turn. Of course, Dave is talking about Elliott Siglin. He's a race and test pilot that was a hugely helpful consultant for us. We expect this not to be exciting, but we're going into it to mitigate any excitement. One of my favorite uh, criticisms of my channel is that it makes the assumption that flight test is exciting, because it isn't. <laughs> there is some turbulence out there today, mm -hmm. so the idea is, you know, let's get the airplane to 2.5G and know that the airplane is going to stay happy at 2.5G. But despite all our attempts to mitigate excitement, things did get interesting. How was that? Tower 7 Alpha Romeo's got an unexpected vibration immediate return. Tower 7 Alpha Romeo, angled towards runway 9 or left. Your number 2 flying a helicopter on shore final runway 9 or left. Clear to land. 9 or left, clear to land. 7 Alpha Romeo. Parker 3, Charlie Echo, number 1, runway 9 or right, clear to land, traffic's an experimental. They're on a very high left base, altitude indicates 3,000 feet, they're inbound for the parallel runway. All right, clear to land, 9 or right, looking for them, 9, 8, 3, Charlie Echo. I think it's a panel. For 7 Alpha Romeo, do you require any assistance? Negative for 7 Alpha Romeo at this time. Uh, uh. I think it's a vibrating panel. This is cool to watch. Dave did a great job getting the airplane back down on the ground safely, very quickly. Wind 080 at 6. Number 65, Juliet, start your left turn on course. Starting left turn on course, 65, Juliet. Well, you got it down okay. It's really got a lot of energy. Number 7 Alfa Romeo, make the left turn at Kilo if you can make it, or uh, left turn at Whiskey, then cut the ground point niner. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be Whiskey for 7 Alfa Romeo. Whew. I didn't go exactly as I planned.
got to be a panel or something. Super high frequency, and as soon as it started to accelerate, it was like, like really fast. Like, I don't think it was control flutter, but I don't want a panel flying off your airplane either. No sense in beating up the airplane, so. Yeah. It flies well. Okay. It flies really, really well. Taxi test was fine. An unexpectedly large amount of energy for a prop full fine airplane. Like, it's, it's very, very slippery compared to the other stuff I've flown, so. Maybe the idle is slightly high. It didn't seem slightly high on departure, but. I'm wondering if it's the canopy. I'm seeing some paint wear here. Is this new? No, that, that's, 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 that's always been there? I, did, I mean, the I canopy did think it might be the canopy. Make noise. But this was like, like really yeah. high frequency and like I could feel it in my body, but not in the stick. I like having cameras for debriefing. At this point, I'm at like 60% power or something. Slowing back to. Did it again at 140, I was like, I'm out. Yeah, okay. The guys weren't convinced it was the canopy, but that's not an easy fix. So since we were planning to decowl the engine before a second flight anyways, we took that opportunity to look for other culprits for the vibration issue. And if you're interested in seeing more of Martin's build, he actually documented a fair bit on his own YouTube channel. He's a pretty entertaining filmmaker and it's definitely worth checking out. But these gear leg fairings were something we thought might be a potential problem. This seems like a fair assessment, these intersections here. Look yeah. at the way that is. Why don't you take this off? Well, he said that changes the handling characteristics of the airplane. So it's definitely speed-related vibration, which yeah. means it's something outside the airplane. So we did our best to remove these gear leg fairing seams from the equation by taping them up. And Dave planned to launch for the second flight, knowing that it might still be the canopy, so he was prepared to investigate it further. Find the culprit with the buzzing? Well, we think, maybe. Also, it could just be the canopy, so. Clear pro. Yeah, Pontiac Ground, it's uh, Experimental RV-8, November 657 Alfa Romeo. 657 Alfa Romeo, Pontiac Ground, runway 9 left, taxi down. It is very bright now at this time of day. I'm gonna have to lower the visor. Still got good positive view on all my instruments though. Garmin avionics are pretty bright. Whole box feels clear. I'm strapped, canopy's locked. Gauges are green, temperatures are good. Full ridge on the runway, wide open. Experimental seven off Romeo, fly shoot out. I will call your turn, runway nine or eight, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, nine and right, you call the turn, seven alpha Romeo. Back in the okay, prop governor is a 2800. Dave misspoke there. What he's talking about are the prop pitch stops, which he's validating by quickly advancing power to overshoot the prop governor and then watching to make sure the number stays safe. And then the governor kicks in and brings it back down to about 2700 RPM. At 2680, all gauges are green. That was a deliberately fast advance. Airplane's flying 70, 80, 80. There's my 100 knots, full power climb, still 360 on the CHTs, oil temperature's looking good. Experimental 7 Alfa Romeo, left turn approved, advise inbound. 7 Alfa Romeo, thanks for your help. 2500, we're just going to go bring the power back a little here for the remainder of the climb. It was fairly likely that flight 2 was also going to be cut short, but we had a briefing about how to proceed and how Dave would try to glean some more information during that flight. Coming up on altitude. So we close the canopy to get a look at it and we can see like this just has the right amount of tension for me mentally. Like this is, the, this is kind of in that vibration range. Marty, you find if I, if I get the vibration again with the tape on there, do you want me to investigate it like for, for, for a few seconds and kind of yeah. get it to come back, feel around like, hey, let's try to isolate where this is coming from. There's the uh, vibration. Let's close the cabin then. It's a canopy. Good lord, is it bad. I only feel it in the canopies. The further back I got, the worse the vibration yeah. felt. So it's coming from the back of the airplane. And you were touching the skirt or the canopy? The skirt. Okay. Yeah. And the canopy, both. But okay. I mean, you can feel it's all assembled, right? Yeah. I was mostly in that first rectangle of fabric over there is what I was feeling. It's very present in the, very present in the canopy and not really present at all 
in the, the top cowl of the airplane. Nothing in the controls at all. They went a lot of my back, which is kind of... Oh, God, it's horrible. That's the weird thing. Anyway, that's, yeah, it, it, it moved a fair bit, actually, back here. Yeah, it's definitely... I'm gonna run it for 10 minutes, and unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to call it. Definitely not coming from the engine. I feel it with the power change. Airplane's totally quiet. Pour the coals on it. Part of the objective here was to make some progress breaking in the new engine. The hope was to be able to run it for a while at a high power setting, but that would mean also at a high speed. There it is again at 140. It's like it's... There's no way this is a normal vibration, but I also don't think it's a flight critical vibration. I'm gonna run his engine for 10 minutes and then I'm gonna clear the low speed envelope because I don't anticipate any problems with that. Okay, ground at 7 Alfa Romeo. The canopy vibration is fairly severe uh, at anything over 140 knots. I'm gonna burn the engine for 10 to the low speed card and then I'm gonna return. Here are some of the highlights from the low speed test card portion of the flight. Oil temperature is good at low speed, that's nice. Approach speed to 75 seems pretty good over the fence, I would say. Let's go full flap. 40 degrees of flaps. Handling feels okay at 60. Do our flap speed of 87. There's 87. Flaps feel good, we'll retract them at 87. Stages. I don't want to run his engine at low power, so we'll return. Yeah, tower 7 Alpha Romeo would like to return. Full stop. 7 Alpha Romeo, Roger. Join a right downwind for 9 right. Join a right hand downwind for 9 right for 7 Alpha Romeo. Prop is in, mixture's rich, boost pump is on, fuel's on what I suspect is the high tank, but I don't trust these gauges. Most test flight programs do run into some minor issues, so it's important to run a program specific with test cards and so on, and EAA can help with that. They've got a test flying book that's worth looking into. Vibration's horrendous. What's the canopy? I think so. Anything over 160, I started to be very concerned about the structural integrity of the canopy. Below that, uh, it's just really annoying. Under 138, it's not even present at all. Um, I elected to run the engine for 10 minutes hard, as much as I could tolerate it. Then I did the low speed handling, the flaps, all that was pretty normal. And then just landed because that has to be dealt with. It flies perfectly straight at, at cruise power. Um, awesome flying airplane, like really, really nice. Lots of power, no concerns there. Very slippery. Like way, it's, it's appreciably like you can tell when it's not a side by side. Yeah, it's a it's really slippery airplane. So Marty has some fiberglass work ahead of himself before flight three, and this is also a good example of a case where flying before paint is probably a good idea. That's what we did with the RV14. We worked at a bunch of bugs and got it painted a year after flying. Um, I had to skip the wind up turns because the canopy was vibrating, so I didn't put any G on the, in the airframe because mm -hmm. we just don't couldn't be 100% sure where that was coming from. It was 99% it was a canopy. But. Okay. So basically, I slowed the airplane down to uh, 75 or something like that, lowered the flaps to half, lowered the flaps to full, got all the way down to 60 knots with the flaps full, totally expected handling characteristics, accelerated the flaps all the way to 87 and flew around with them at 87 for a second, no issues there. So we didn't clear the, uh, the big long engine run times we wanted today, and we didn't clear the wind up turns, but other than the canopy vibration, like it's, it's basically a perfect airplane. So don't okay. get too bent out of shape by the canopy. Right. Except for you're already thinking about right. the hours of, that you have yeah, to spend I, with it. I know what work might have to be called for. And Based on, I, I didn't let it accelerate all the way to 80% power because it just got too vibrating, but at 160 knots, mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna need a wedge. Okay. So it flies basically, never even touch the aileron trim. Like it's just in the neutral position, yeah. it's like perfect. So. Cool. Congratulations on building an airplane that flies. Thank you. You know, you got a little work to do, but. Yep. It'll sink in the day after tomorrow. <laughs>
Marty actually got to work immediately and had it fixed for a trouble-free third flight the following week. Thanks to Marty for being so open to share this process and thanks to Dave for all the hard work. He volunteered his services for this one. The third flight allowed for a long engine break-in and then Dave also worked through the stall card and other remaining key parts of the flight test before handing it over to Marty to finish. And a great end to this story was that he made it to AirVenture with the airplane. So until the next one, keep your flight chops sharp. Well, big congratulations for making it. Just Thank with you. That, like how many hours over top of the uh, 40? Eight. Eight. And that I, includes the trip here. Yeah. I, I got my 40 in. I had one real quick maintenance flight. I took Amy up because you got to take your wife up first. And then I did spot landings and then came here. So it's 48 hours right now. So. The important thing is he did the spot landings before he came to Oshkosh.